Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. In this video, we're really going to do two things. We're going to examine the anatomy of a sarcomere, and then we're going to look at the mechanism of the sliding filament model, which is a mechanism that's proposed to describe how a sarco or really a series of sarcomeres shorten and really allow an entire muscle to visibly shorten. So we're going to be discussing both of those things here. Okay. Uh, now, first of all, what is a sarcomere? Well, the sarcomere is the functional unit of a contracting muscle. And we're talking about skeletal muscle here, although a lot of this is going to apply to both cardiac and smooth muscle as well. And so skeletal muscle fibers, each fiber is filled with millions, millions of sarcomeres. Okay? Some are arranged in parallel, but what we're going to be looking at here are sarcomeres arranged in series. The best way to visualize sarcomeres in series is really to think about a train going along the train tracks. I think we've all at some point, this is just part of the human experience, we've all been needing to go somewhere and we're running a little bit late and we'd probably be fine and then the train comes and you have to stop for 10 minutes. And I think we all realize that there's a leading unit on the train, there's a caboose all the way at the end, everyone's waiting for the caboose, and sometimes there can be hundreds of units between the caboose and the leading unit. You can tell by my terminology I'm certainly not an expert on trains, but I think you get the idea. Those uh, units on the train, each car, or whatever they're called, okay, they're all arranged in series. Okay, The way sarcomeres are lined up in a muscle cell, um, we have sarcomeres arranged in series. And so if you have those sarcomeres arranged in series all contract at the same time, then you can actually get visible contraction of an entire skeletal muscle. And that's something you can see macroscopically. But on the microscopic level, all the sarcomeres are shortening in series. Now, let's first discuss the anatomy of the sarcomere. We're going to look at several different pictures here, two on this slide, and then there's going to be one on the next. And this is usually a confusing topic for students because we've got all these bands, A band, I band, H band, sometimes called an H zone, an M band, also called an M line, a Z disc called a, a Z line. All this terminology, what does it all mean? Okay, let's break it down. And to do that, let's define the limits of a sarcomere. We really have to understand that first. Okay, what's the limit of a sarcomere? A sarcomere is defined as being from the Z disc to the next Z disc, Z to Z. Okay, that's a sarcomere, Z to Z. Okay. Now, everything in between those two Z disks is one sarcomere. Right in the dead center of the sarcomere between the two Z disks, or Z lines as they're often called, is this line right in the middle. It's a middle line or an M line. Some sources like you see here will call it an M band. It's the same thing. M line, M band, You've got two Z discs or Z lines. The way to think about the sarcomeres is like a basketball court. Okay, so you've got each Z disc representing the basically the boundary um, on either side of the goal. Okay, so one team's goal is over here. There's of course a boundary. You can't cross that. Then the other goal is over here. You've got a boundary on this side. That's the length of the basketball court. And then of course you have the half court line. That's the M line or the M band. Okay, so. Length of a sarcomere, Z disc to Z disc, and then right in the middle is the M line. Now, got a few other things here to, to worry about. Where's the actin and where's the myosin? The easy way to remember this is myosin starts with an M, and so the myosin is attached to the M line. Okay, if we zoom in right here and we look at these little proteins with these little heads sticking off, this is all myosin, and it's part of the thick filament. Okay? In other words, we can really just say the thick filament is attached to the M line. Thick filament is attached to the M line. All right? These ones right here in gray, with the little tropomyosin protein on it in orange, these are the thin filaments, and these uh, gray proteins are actin. Okay? So actin as a part of the thin filament is attached to each Z disc. So here we've got a thin filament right here with actin attached to this Z disc. We can go over to the other side and we've got a Z disc right here. And we've got a thin filament with actin on this. So again, I think about it M to M, M and M, okay? M line has myosin attached. And then the Z disc has actin, A to Z, A to Z. You talk about the alphabet A to Z, M and M, midline or M line has myosin. Okay. Now, a few other things here. 
what is the H zone, what is the A band, and what is the I band. To do this, I'm actually going to insert a text box right here, and I'm going to show you a really cool way to remember this. H, A, and I. Let's blow this up. All right, let's look at these three letters right here. So first of all, H zone. What is the H zone? Well, look at the letter H, okay? Look at the top of the letter H, and then look at the bottom. You say, well, that's really silly. Well, notice that the top of the letter H is thick, the bottom of the letter H is thick. Compare that to A, where the bottom is thick and the top is thin, or to the letter I, where both the top and the bottom are thin. Why does that matter to us? Well, the H zone is really the region of the sarcomere where there's only myosin. There's only myosin. Remember, myosin is part of the thick filament. So H zone is the region where we have only myosin. Okay? Um, we'll be able to see this a little bit better on the next slide, but just keep that in mind. The H zone is only going to have myosin in it. Okay? There's no overlapping actin. Now the I band, okay, the I band, top of the letter is thin, bottom of the letter is thin. So what do you think we're only going to find in the I band? we're only going to find the thin filaments where we have actin. Okay, only actin is going to be present in the I band. There's going to be no overlapping myosin. So that means that the A band or the A zone is going to be a region where we might have overlapping myosin and overlapping actin. Overlapping thick filament, overlapping thin filament. Now that's mostly true for the A band. What I will say is there's a rigorous definition of it, and it's really just the entire length of myosin. Okay, um, it's the entire length of myosin. However, when we have a contracted sarcomere, that region tends to have both overlapping thick and thin filaments, so overlapping myosin and actin. So if we look at the A band right here, it's from this point to this point. Notice that's the entire length of where we have this myosin. The myosin goes from here to the M line and then over this side over to here. Okay, That right there is the A band. So the rigorous definition is it's the region that has myosin. Okay, doesn't matter if it overlaps or not with actin, it's the region with myosin. However, if you notice, most of it actually is overlapping with actin. Okay, most of it's overlapping with actin. So you can use that to remember that the A band is mostly myosin overlapping with actin. Myosin thick, actin thin. Now the I band, we said, was a place where we only had actin. All right, there's no overlapping myosin, no thick filaments, only thin. Look at the I band right here. It goes from right here to right here. Are there any thick filaments in that region? No, there's only thin filaments. That's why we have a thin letter for that. And then the H zone is a place where regardless of where we are in the contraction state, we only have myosin. We only have thick filaments. So here's the H zone right here. Again, there's no thin filaments in this area. There's only thick filaments. Okay. So just to reiterate that, H zone, only thick filaments, only myosin. A technically defined as a place of the entire length of myosin, but we tend to have a lot of myosin overlapping with actin. Thick filaments overlapping with thin. I band, only thin filaments, so only actin. Okay. Um, you'll also notice here that there's another protein here called Titan. Uh, this protein is shown in pink, and if we actually look at the entire length of Titan, what we can see is that on this end it attaches to the Z disk. It actually goes over to the a thick filament and then traverses all the way to the M line. And so what Titan does is it's a very, very large protein. In fact, it's the largest protein in a human genome. It actually connects the M line to the Z line, or in this case, M band to the Z disk. Okay, it connects M to Z, right? And Titan itself is an elastic protein, so it can stretch. But really the job of Titan is, is to actually limit the stretch of the sarcomere. So your sarcomere can't stretch indefinitely because it would be uh, severely damaged. And if you stretch a muscle too much, it will become damaged, it'll tear. But at each sarcomeric level, Titan is going to be this elastic protein that connects the M line to the Z line, or Z disc, and it's going to limit the amount of stretch um, of that sarcomere. Okay? And you can see there's a lot of Titan here. So hopefully that makes sense. 
Let's take another look at the sarcomere down here and get an appreciation. This, I believe, is a transmission electron microscope image. I'm not exactly certain on that, but I believe it's TEM, transmission electron microscopy. But again, it's arranged here in the same way we got the art artist's rendition up here. So here is the length of the sarcomere. What did we say the, the limits of the sarcomere were? Well, it's the Z disc or Z line to the next Z disc or Z line. And in a TEM or whatever microscope image this is, the Z line is gonna be this very, very dark band, okay? So this is the Z disc over here, that's the Z disc over here, and the length of one to the next defines the length of the sarcomere. Right in the center, what should we have? We should have an M line because M stands for middle, all right? What protein is attached to the M line? Now that's gonna be the thick filament and myosin. Okay, myosin. And then right here from this point to this point, we have the A band. What is the A band? Well, the A band is really just where we have the length of myosin. So myosin, we know from this image, is going from here to here. What's the I band? Well, the I band here is where we only have actin. We only have thin filaments. Uh, myosin tends to make the region darker. So we can tell the I band because it's much, much lighter. Okay, and the I band is just going to have the Z disc right in the middle of it. Okay, so here's the I band, and this half of the I band right here corresponds to this sarcomere. The other half of this I band corresponds to the next sarcomere in series, which would be on this side, and then this region of this I band corresponds to being in the sarcomere on this side in series. Okay, so we'd have a sarcomere over here. We've clearly got one right here. We have another one in series over here, all right? And then we really can't see the H zone, uh, but again, the H zone is gonna be flanking the M line on either side. It's usually gonna be pretty small at first, and it's the region where we only have myosin, only thick filaments and no overlapping thin. So hopefully that makes sense. Now that we hopefully have an appreciation for the anatomy of the sarcomere, let's take a look at this. This is going to be an animation where I'm going to show you how these sarcomeres in series are going to contract. Okay, and we're going to actually see each of the sarcomeres shortening toward the M line. Okay, now let's review a little bit of anatomy here. So again, here's the length of one sarcomere. This is how I'm defining it. So what should this very dark line be right here? Okay. You should know that's a Z-disc or a Z-line because remember the sarcomere is defined as being from Z-disc to Z-disc. So this should be a Z-disc over here. You wouldn't even need this label if you knew the length of the sarcomere. Right in the middle, what's this? Well, that's the M-line. We've got another M-line label over here on this side. Here's another M-line over here. And what protein is attached to the M-line? Well, it's myosin. So this blue one right here would have to be the thick filament where we have the myosin because it's attached to the M line. What would the red protein have to be? Well, it's attached to the Z disc, so it would have to be actin. Okay? And I've obviously omitted a lot of other things like troponin, tropomyosin, I've omitted titan, but we really only need to see these things to understand how the sarcomere shortens. Now, one thing I do want to reiterate, and you can go back and watch my video on this in the playlist, I want you to remember that myosin is the enzymatic protein, okay? It's the one that has an ATPase activity. It's the one that moves. And so remember, myosin uh, is going to pull actin toward the midline, okay? So here's the midline. And you can keep an eye on any of these actins right here, but essentially what's going to happen is the myosin is going to pull the actin toward this midline. So this actin right here is going to be pulled toward this midline, toward the right, and this actin over here is going to be pulled toward the left to this midline right here. And so that's going to happen at every single one of the sarcomeres, and so you're going to have a net shortening of the muscle that you can see macroscopically. Now before we go any further, down here we've got our baseline levels for the A band, H zone, and I band, and then for the shortened position. And remember, what is the A band? The A band is the entire length of myosin. Now, generally, that's where you're gonna have also overlapping myosin and actin. We can see a little bit of that right here, right? Here's overlapping myosin and actin. But the definition of the A band is it's the entire length of myosin. So when I go from a baseline position to a shortened position, do we predict that the A band will change sizes? No. Because by definition, the A band is literally just the length of myosin. And myosin is not shortening, it's not being destroyed, it's not being lengthened. 
Myosin is not changing. The thick filament does not change sizes. So the A band is not going to change sizes. However, the H zone and I bands will. What is the H zone? The H zone, remember, is the region where we only have myosin and there is no overlapping actin. That's from here to here. But if you imagine, we're going to be shortening the sarcomere. And so you can imagine that the H zone is going to drop in size and it could eventually, if it shortens enough, disappear. The I band, at least in terms of from this Z disc uh, to here, this would be our I band. Okay? Now, uh, when the sarcomere shortens, this Z disc is going to be pulled towards this Z disc. And so what's going to happen is the I band is also going to shrink. Okay? So when we look at this, you're going to expect the A band to remain the same size, and then the H zone and I bands will drop in size. Okay? They will diminish. All right? So hopefully that makes sense. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the animation, and I'm going to show you it several times. And as we're watching it, I want you to watch, first of all, the Z discs move closer together because the sarcomere is shortening. I want you to watch the actin in red, those thin filaments, being pulled toward, toward the M line. And then I also want you to see that the A band, which is just the length of myosin, is not changing. Okay? So let's watch this animation. So keep a watch on this, and notice Z lines are moving closer together. Z lines are moving closer together, right? If we watch this again, you can see the actin being pulled toward the M line. Is the A band changing size? No, the A band is not changing size. A band never changes size. Does the I band change size? Yes. The I band is changing size because as the Z discs move closer to one another, as the sarcomere contracts, the area where there's only thin filaments is dropping. Okay? It's decreasing in size. Then, is the H zone changing size? And the answer is yes, it's decreasing in size because as the sarcomere contracts, we're getting more and more overlap between actin and myosin. Okay? And so when we're shortening this sarcomere, okay, we're shortening the contractile unit of a skeletal muscle. And we've got a bunch of sarcomeres in series like this, as you can see. And as this is occurring across the entire length of a muscle, you're going to see macroscopic, visible shortening of the entire muscle. And so it's not that one sarcomere shortening, it's that you've got thousands millions of sarcomere shortening all at the same time. And because they all do this microscopically, we can see it macroscopically. And so again, the things to remember here that are really important are remembering the A band doesn't change size. The H band and I band will decrease in size during shortening. And then also, make sure you know your relevant anatomy. Make sure you know what Titan is, the Z disc, the M line, know what actin is, myosin, and then also the thin and thick filaments. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.